When the Falklands War broke out in 1982, the Argentine Navy had four submarines in service, two of which were advanced 209 type, while the other two were old submarines in service for many years, one of which was the San Luis submarine belonging to the Balao class. The Balao class was a submarine from the World War II era, and the predecessor of the San Luis was the USSS-339 submarine, which entered service on March 19, 1945, and carried out missions in the Western Pacific region in the last few months of World War II. The Balao class submarines were the main submarines of the U.S. military during World War II, with a submerged displacement of nearly 2,500 tons, equipped with 10 533mm torpedo tubes in a six-forward, for aft configuration. Due to the limitations of battery technology at the time, the submarine had a relatively short diving time and consumed electricity quickly. After World War II, the Balao class underwent modifications, such as the removal of deck guns and the addition of snorkels, allowing the submarine to charge underwater. However, the snorkels had limited air intake, only allowing two diesel engines to operate. The San Luis entered service with the Argentine Navy in the early 1970s, and before the outbreak of the Falklands War, the San Luis was not the Navy's main force. At that time, the Argentine Navy was in the process of updating its equipment, and two new 209-type submarines had already arrived, with other new surface warships under construction. After the outbreak of the war, the two 209 submarines became the main targets of the British forces. Several anti-submarine helicopters were deployed to search for them. However, one 209 submarine was unable to move while in the dock, and the other experienced a malfunction shortly after leaving port, unable to fully deploy its combat capabilities. The San Luis was then tasked with supply and transport missions, transporting special forces and supplies to the islands. On April 12, the San Luis was ordered to escort the Marines to South Georgia Island. Submarine No. 17 set out, and No. 25 successfully arrived and completed the landing of personnel. However, the submarine did not immediately return, choosing to remain in the area. The submarine was soon spotted by a British Wessex anti-submarine helicopter. The British forces, prepared with ample anti-submarine capabilities, directed their firepower at the San Luis. The San Luis was damaged in the first wave of attacks, rendering it unable to dive due to damage to the ballast tanks and other structures. Subsequently, a Lynx anti-submarine helicopter and a Sea Cat anti-submarine aircraft arrived. The Sea Cat released an 46 Malawi and Quachas torpedo, but missed its target. Instead, its 7.62mm machine gun pierced the hull of the submarine, and several AS-12 anti-ship missiles were launched at the San Luis. The Argentine forces were not entirely passive in this one-sided battle. The Marines and other soldiers immediately fought back against the helicopters with rifles and machine guns. They even found an old RB-53 anti-tank missile to attempt to attack the helicopters, although the missile, guided by visual targeting and wire, had a range of only 2,000 meters and was inefficient against helicopters. The San Luis ultimately did not survive. The crew abandoned ship when it became clear that there was no hope of rescue. At that point, the submarine was unable to dive or move, and the crew members opened many valves as they left, causing the submarine to sink in the harbor, with only the conning tower remaining above the water. Shortly thereafter, the British forces arrived and captured the submarine. Considering the high cost of repairing the submarine, the British temporarily salvaged and towed it to deep water to be destroyed. The San Luis submarine was already quite aged during the Falklands War, and its noise level was high, making it difficult to evade the search of anti-submarine helicopters even in submerged mode. Therefore, the British forces did not view it as a major threat. Of course, as a submarine, the San Luis still had opportunities, under the operation of skilled crew, to approach and launch deadly attacks on targets such as transport ships. However, several anti-submarine helicopters sealed its fate, and it was unfortunate to lose its diving capability in the first round of firepower. 
This helicopter and submarine battle did not have strong technical representativeness. Firstly, the submarine itself was old and was discovered in port and did not fully demonstrate the hunting and killing skills of the anti-submarine helicopters. If it had been a torpedo boat or similar vessel docked instead of a submarine, the outcome of the battle would probably have been similar. However, from the British perspective, the fact that they were able to summon three anti-submarine helicopters for combat in a short period of time showed that the British's scheduling and anti-submarine capabilities should not be underestimated.